Okay, so I just wanted to take a few moments to demonstrate why I love the Lee turret press so much. And uh, sort of Lee dies too. I do use mostly Lee dies. This particular one right here, not the whole set, but just this one is not. I screwed up the other one and I cheaped out and replaced it with a used one. I say cheap, it actually cost the same as a replacement from Lee, but I didn't want to pay the extra 15 bucks for them to ship it across the border for just one die, so. The press itself, you know, it's outside, it's not, not outside in weather, but it's out in my garage. Um, you can see it's not exactly high-tech windows or anything here. It's cold, it's not heated out here. Uh, it still functions flawlessly, even with this shitty Cabela's case lubricant. This is for all metallic cartridges, non-aerosol spray. It's really shitty. Uh, I do occasionally destroy brass because of this. The um, the case lube or the RCBS or the Imperial Sizing Wax is much better. So, you know, it's below freezing tonight and this thing's running pretty well flawlessly. The only time that I ever have any trouble with with this system is I think it's down to minus 10 or 15 um, anything made out of plastic like Lee's safety prime Lee's perfect powder measure these type of things will not work when it gets down that cold it's just the plastic uh, resin plastic whatever they use it expands and contracts so much at that temperature that the tolerances are just way way too much but oops. <clears throat> that screw up to my fault and you know it's dusty out here too I uh, I work away from home a lot I'm gone for sometimes a month at a time and occasionally I'll come out and and do something, give it a little spray or something to stop it from rusting, but for the most part, nothing. I just go away and come back and and color done. And it works perfect, so. Anyways, just wanted to share that with you guys. Thanks for watching. So I've probably mentioned this before, but the rifle I shoot these 3220 in is a Husqvarna single shot and it actually has a 308 barrel on it so with the Lee set the expander expands it out to about 310 and these 308 these are Barry's uh, copper plated bullets by the way they're 110 green they're meant for the 30 carbine I think anyway they'll drop right down into the case so when I run it up I just just barely kissed that expander so it's just setting on it's not expanding and the uh, just the weight of the handle holding it and that's all all you need for a jacket of bullet I'm going with uh, 0.5 cc's of 700x which is 3.7 grains it should be now, a lot of the times I'll make these little videos just to save my load data in case I forget to write it down somewhere. But, but anyways, yeah, see that bullet, I can just set it on there just like a, a rifle bullet. I can sort of push it in the case just a little bit, but I'll let the, uh, let the die do the rest. And voila, nice shiny nickel-plated bullet, or nickel-plated case bullet. <clears throat> uh, if anyone out there is looking for powders, or trying to decide what type of powders for loading these, uh, I guess I call them semi-obsolete calibers, or obsolete calibers, calibers, anything really that there's not a whole lot of load data for, you want to try and pick yourself up an older loading book or just scour the internet. Uh, scouring the internet 
sometimes you get good stuff, sometimes you don't. There's a lot of people out there that'll say stuff because they think they know what they're talking about in reality. They're an idiot. That can be dangerous, but I was saying the older loading books, um, and even even sometimes that doesn't always work. I just picked up a Lyman cast bullet manual. It's from uh, 73. I bought it for a few reasons. I like to shoot cast bullets, especially the uh, the high tech coated ones like this one here. It's a 30 30 bullet with the uh, Lee SKS mold. But uh, I have a Savage single shot, so I can shoot pointed ones in it. Um, anyway, I picked that up. You know, I was hoping hoping to get some good data out of it. Didn't really work out. I wanted some for my 32 WSL. Turns out it had data for the 357 and the 401. Nothing on the 32, so that kind of sucked. But uh, it did have some other good stuff in there. The only thing I found was it's kind of biased to the fast burning pistol powders. Um, when I shoot cast bullets, I like to get them up. 18, you know, 2,000 feet per second. Pretty much your 30-30 ballistics. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of of shooting cast bullets in a rifle that's that's uh, way loaded down. Uh, you know, if I want to shoot my 30-30 at 1,000 feet per second. I'm not going to take my 3030, I'm going to take my 3220. That works for me because I have that gun. Other people, they may be a completely different line of thought. But anyway, the powders, as you know, or can see, I'm loading all these one scoop at a time, which is great for developing loads, but when you want to do a whole bunch, not so great. I like to use this. These really light flake powders, like shotgun powders, um, Red Dot, Herco, I believe, is one. Uh, don't hold me to that, but this one here, of course, I'm into a cap. These flake powders don't like to meter all that well in some circumstances. You can kind of see that. Oh. But, uh, I found, at least with the 700X, that's the worst one I've found so far, the Lee powder through dies, it sticks in them. So, shoot. It sticks in them, so sometimes I'll get almost nothing, I'll only get a couple flakes, and then all of a sudden the next one is run over and i got to stop and tear everything apart. Or you got to check every case and weigh them, and it's not worth it. Uh, it does seem to work okay if you drop them with the scoop, but anyway, a good alternative are powders like 4227 or 4227. 4227 is actually a very short, well, it's a stick powder, but it's cut up. It looks almost like a ball powder if you don't look too close because they're so short. They're about as long as they are wide. Uh, that meters really well. Any of the ball powders, I think most Winchester powders are ball powders. I think most IMR powders are, are stick powders. 760, another one that meters really well. Lever Evolution, I haven't really tried this out too much. Uh, yeah, it's a ball powder. But. Sometimes I get stuck in a train of thought that, you know, the lighter the powder, or the least least dense it is, the better, because I get more for my dollar. But in reality, everything that I save by buying a really light powder, like, say, Trail Boss or 700X, it ends up costing me in the long run because I have a lot of wasted rounds because they don't powder doesn't drop right or anything. Find a powder that works for you and stick with it. But uh, I've tried a few of these 
with the 700X. They seem to group pretty well. Um, these are, I think these are 1,200 feet per second. That's that's with a jack to bullet. Might be a little more with the plated ones. Your plated velocities and chamber pressures are very close to that of the of cast bullets, which is which is good because it keeps chamber pressures lower. So anyway, well, if you lasted this long watching my super high quality ramblings, you might as well take a look at my bloopers. Had a little trouble with this new die setting it up. Um, I, I lubed some cases, but then I grabbed one that was sitting on the bench. I didn't have any lube in, so it crushed it. And then it broke a piece off and got stuck in the die, and I screwed up a bunch of cases. So here's number one. And for comparison, here's a loaded one. So I got that out, and I thought I got all the brass out, of course I didn't. So there's number two, starting to get expensive. Now I couldn't believe that there was still something stuck in there, and in my ignorance I tried it again, so here's number three. and. Then I picked it out, finally got the little piece out, or thought I got all the little pieces out. There's still one in there. So there's number three, or number four, I guess. And finally got everything out, and forgot to put the center back in the die, the decapping rod. So there's number five, also completely fucked. And then once I finally got the die put back together, Along came number six. I had the die set down too far, and you can see the big bulge in the shoulder. But luckily, these are very thin brass. Well, not really luckily, because that's why they all got fucked up. But being a rimmed single shot, take my handy dandy pliers back here where there's no no uh, teeth. I just set it on there and rotate it. And what I'm doing is just pushing that shoulder in. Now it kind of, well, I guess didn't mark the brass up too much. It's still pretty ugly. And it's probably not going to be very accurate, but when I fire that, it'll fire form back to the chamber and I'll get a good piece of brass out of it. So anyways, thanks for watching my ramblings today and I'll post another video. I'll try these out, see how they shoot, see if I can get an impressive target to show you guys. Probably won't happen, but I'll try anyways.